I'm so peckish. Let's go and make some popcorns. Let's try, let's try. Oh no, no popcorns. Ah! <laughs> it worked. Hello, current timers. Welcome back. This is Enrico from Conductive Music. Today, in this new episode of Art in Quarantine, we're gonna put to use the coded alarm that we prepared on the last episode, and we're gonna trigger them through light, motion, and even through metal detection. Let's get right to it. We're once again back onto the Make Code website to code our micro bit. We want to be able to open a communication with the light sensor, and it's called Serial. Serial with an S, not like the breakfast stuff. So we start by clicking on Advanced. Towards the bottom, you'll find this serial. Grab the first one and put it inside a forever. Now let's skip up to the top. And inside Input, you will find our light sensor. It's called Light Level. We can go in there, click it. Perfect. And right after a quick pairing, here's it for you just in case you forgot. One, two, three steps. I once again have my microbit set up over here, and in case you were wondering, the light sensor is nothing but the 25 LEDs that can be used in reverse. Instead of emitting light, they can be used to record the light. Let's see how we can measure this light. Make sure that you click the show console device. If you don't have the microbit hardware, don't worry, just use the simulator, you can do the similar thing. Now, at the moment, I've got quite a few lights in this living room, so my numbers are quite high. Look, it's between uh, 55 and 65. Let's prepare the code for this first experiment. The beginning part is going to be very similar to what we did on the last one. So I'm going to create two variables, which are called siren and how much. On the start statement, I want to set my siren to 180 and my how much to 6. So it's a bit faster. So far, nothing different. We want to create a constant change so that the pitch changes. Change siren by how much? I'm going to create the if statement from last time. This one is when the siren reaches the peak. When it does so, 780. We want it to go down to the beginning part. Now here we would have put a rest and then the resonate from here. So we would have used this block. This time, instead, I want to create a separate forever block. This one is going to be used to determine when the light is changed. So it's going to be a new if statement. I'm going to use an if and else. I'm just going to copy this for speed. Use this as a smaller than. And instead of siren, we're going to need a read from the light level. So when the light level decreases, let's say under 25, I would like the siren off. Once again, I put the siren instead of my note. If the light is above 25, I would like it to be silent. So let's see what the code is doing and then we'll test it right away. On start, we set the siren at 180. This is hertz, vibrations per second. How much is it changing by? 6. When is it changing? Constantly. Now, what happens if it gets to 780? It gets restarted down to 180. Instead of resonating directly in this block, we create a separate forever block down here. If the light level is less than 25, it means it's dark, then the tone is ringing. If not, we get some silence. You can test it directly on your browser by lowering this below 25. Download your code back in the serial monitor. I use the same exact code as before. I have now reinstated the serial communication so you can see the microbit readings as well as the physical microbit. And let's see what happens when it gets dark. So it's bright, dark. For our experiment, if we want to put this with a battery pack inside the cupboard and then trigger it whenever the cupboard is open and the light goes in, we of course need to change the code a little bit. We need it to be triggered not with darkness, but with the light. Oh no, no popcorns! Ah! Mm, I guess the cupboard is out of limits for a little bit. Never mind. I've just discovered that there is a very delicious cake inside the oven. But let's see if we can stop ourselves from going and eating it a little bit too early. The oven door usually opens like that. So I want something that measures the uh, pitch 
of the microbit. So our code starts from the former light level, but let's try and uh, experiment with another sensor. So if you click back on input and then more, you can uh, go and fetch the first one, which measures the rotation. If we imagine having the micro bit standing vertically like so, and then moving when the door is open, let's see what type of readings we get. So when the micro bit is vertical, I get around 80, but when it comes down, it's 150. Here's the microbit position inside the oven, so vertical. And then let's see what happens when I open the oven. Oh! Let's go and test it inside the oven. We've been told that there's a fantastic cake in the oven. Let's see, let's take a look. Oh no! Not even the cake, oh my goodness. Uh, well, at least the alarm worked. Okay there, so did you try? Did you try the light alarm on the cupboard? And how about the tilting one inside the oven? Everything worked? Uh, be careful, take everything off now, okay? It's very important that it's not inside the oven for obvious reasons. There is one more thing that I would like to show you because the microbit has got a magnetometer inside. It's able to measure the magnetic fields around it. Now, a speaker in itself is a magnet. So I'm afraid I cannot connect the speaker to the microbit. However, I can show you what happens when we got closer and further away with it and also when we reverse the polarity simply by putting it upside down. Back into our usual make code platform, we go and create a forever. Inside, we want to create a new variable that I called f and we set f to the magnetic field. It's inside here, so the magnetic force. I want to be able to read these uh, data coming through, so I'm going to go and grab the uh, serial right line exactly the same way as before and uh, position my variable f download my microbit is here of course the microphone is a magnet in itself so i don't want to get too close to it um, i've got readings of about minus 34 let's see what happens as i get my speaker closer to it look 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 it's very close it's 624 70 oh close 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 100 30 something like that oh what watch out watch out here's the magnet here's the magnet my goodness 700 i'm gonna reverse the speaker upside down let's see what happens okay i've got a completely opposite result look it's minus 400 i'm gonna turn it around again and here we push it up and I'm gonna spin it around once more Wow, this is super cool. So any machine that will go, will be turning on like a microwave or something will create a magnetic field that we can trigger through this. Thank you for watching guys and thanks to Arts Council England for providing us with funding to keep going in these challenging times as well as the Love Music Trust which is part of these uh, fantastic videos.